Uh, Jonathan, think that just because he's a remember that yo remember that dude that I showed y'all family that was repping for Rashad Jamal. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know what I mean, man. I'm trying to be with y'all, man. Nigga, I'm gonna ride down to Atlanta, man. Remember that motherfucker? Who was he? Um, some random nigga that was going hard for uh, Rashad Jamal. Now hold up. Like, Look, that nigga be standing in front of my house right now. I wouldn't know that nigga from Iraq and Iraq. Yeah, he's not. He's not. He's not a black man. He's he's not melanated. He's not from none. He's not from nothing that we're from. Okay. He's. When what the fuck is he talking for? If he ain't look, if he ain't from the people from the land, then he ain't got no business even speaking. Cause he can get jacked the fuck up by one of the people from the land that's sitting there right next to him. On speaking on some shit that don't got nothing to do with him, right? I said a little while ago. I said for all of the people that's African pro, uh, what they call uh, Umar say unapologetically African. This is not your business over here. We don't have no problem with y'all being here, but mind your business. If the shit ain't got nothing to do with you, stay out of it. But it's it's crazy because you know. Um, He's like an he's he's a Pacific Islander motherfucker. He's not even he's not even from he's not even a part of this. He's not he's an Arab Pacific Islander motherfucker. He's not he will never show his parents. Well, one thing I can tell you about the Pacific Islanders is they did send soldiers to fight in the Seminole Wars. Yeah, he's an Arab too, though, brother. He he's a whole. He he's everything we not. You feel me? Well, that's I that's view by place. his position on us reclaiming our rights back to the land. See, right. this is what it all boiled down to. When we get to the to the roots and the guts, the dirty Moors want our land. They want to assert uh, Moorish jurisdiction over the organic people from the Americas, and by claiming we the same people, the dirty Moors, the righteous Moors know who they are. They know they organic to the land and they the ones been fighting the dirty moors the whole fucking time. Right? But the, the dirty moors have infiltrated all of the organizations. And um they the ones who've been turning us against each other. Heaven and earth for her. And um I mean it. And I meant it so sincerely that things started to happen. All of my <clears throat> erudition, research, study began to converge from various fields of study in what you would call driving towards the singularity. The singularity being that one focal point from the very center of creation and existence. So all of my knowledge then began to do something internally to me. Externally, what the world was looking at was um, somebody going through the dark night of the soul. Now, for further research on the dark night of the soul, um, it's a lot of good videos on YouTube, but when you source it back to the first descript good description, I think it was St. Thomas Aquinas and St. John of Assisi who both wrote about the dark night of the soul. In biblical reference, the dark night of the soul is what Job went through after um, God decided to throw him to the devil. So all of those afflictions that Job endured, he was going through the dark night of the soul. And then afterwards... Um, he received everything in abundance. This is the same thing in um, the book of Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar is told that um, he would be um, like a wild beast and he would be eating the grass in the fields. He would be going through what they call the dark night of the soul. So the dark night of the soul at its best description would be when your internal um, 
spirit body is waking up inside of your external physical body. This causes a lot of mental, emotional, and spiritual pressure inside that makes it difficult to function externally in the 3D world. So as we walk around down here, we got all this spiritual stuff going on. We look out of whack to people. Um, um, we grow hair um, in a different way. Um, we feel drained all the time. Can't hardly stay awake because there's so much energy going through us. Um, we be more prone to infections and diseases during this time. So you'll see us break out with um, rashes and blisters and all kind of stuff out of nowhere because the physical body is trying to figure out a way to hold on to um, the life force in you while you go through your spiritual development and it ends up drawing more energy than the physical body is capable of sustaining. So you have a person that will go through a drastic weight decline but their diet didn't change, but they can't stay awake. And they always, um, they're never on time. You're going through the dark night of the soul. Especially if they're, they're normally they were prompt. They were a person that was always on time. All of a sudden, they're no longer on time. They was always neat. Now they look disheveled. They're going through the dark night of the soul. There ain't nothing you can do to help them. The only thing you can do to help them is when it's all over, be there. So, when I told somebody I would move heaven and earth for them, when I first told them that, I meant it. But that wasn't enough to make the universe start moving internally and externally to facilitate this. Peace, Denny. So, um, the better I found the person to be, the more sincere I became. And I told him again. And she just looked at me as if I was insane like they all do. And I got to know him even more. And I told her again. I said, you don't understand. I would move heaven and earth for you. And so, um, this is because you can't, we were under a curse, um, a broken family curse, as a result of what was done in Babylon. And those people not having a family, we weren't allowed to have a family. And um, me, my particular punishment was called unrequited love. And what that means is that as soon as I begin to become emotionally and affectionately attached to a female... It will If I tell her with the words, because that's where the power is, as soon as I say it, I-L-U, as soon as I tell her, I know the relationship is over. There's nothing I can do about it at that point. I can't kiss her ass enough to keep her because the curse. So, um, people, humans, need to hear that they cared about and that they love. And that's part of what keeps us motivated and keeps us active in the life cycles. And people, humans, need human touch. We forget this in this world of electronics and digital um, devices that humans need human touch. And we become so disconnected because we don't, embrace each other anymore you know we are not really so happy to see each other anymore and it's not that we don't like each other it's that be because of the lack of the human touch it makes us more reclusive internally which is a cycle and we all go into these shells where we go ice in isolation and get on our devices and we live in our devices so we don't have to um touch people because that physical touch creates an energy matrix 
of harmony between two people and we living in the in the era of discord so if we're living in the era of discord we should be probably doing exactly the opposite of what we're doing instead of moving away from each other as humans creating conditions where we scared to touch one another um maybe we should find excuses to embrace each other and to move closer together as people um energetically speaking more so than anything else because that's where the grid is <clears throat> um the humans make up a bioelectromagnetic grid all over the earth over between the atmosphere and the surface the human grid can alter either the atmospheric grid of the ozone layers or the physical earth uh, bioelectric grid beneath our feet. The women being the most powerful in communicating with the physical earth do particular rites that alter the vibration of the earth itself. And this is what they call flipping the grid. When you move that vibration from the negative low energy and you move it up to the higher energy vibrations that the earth was at before the invaders came. So now, when you tell somebody that, and you mean it that sincerely, and they might not understand what you're going through, because most people don't. Even other people with the same um, ability or the same quality of a grail king they might not even understand it if they are not activated because that's why they call it Kali Yuga or the sleep, the sleep phase of the gods. It's like when you go through your moon cycle and the moon disappear out of view for a couple of days before come back into view. That's how you are awakened internally. So you go through these phases and some of them thousands of years, some hundreds of years and some tens of years. It depends on the person and their power level and how much power that they can um, control and move. Um, so in the course of that, I told her, I said, look, I would move heaven and earth for you. And memory started to come back on the heels of the third time I told her. The memory was the war in heaven. So we're going to deal with the war in heaven because they always tell us that Lucifer tried to overthrow the throne and got cast out of heaven, which is not tr not the case. The one they call Lucifer is actually Venus, and Venus is still there, so that's false. But who the one that they call uh, who did try to advance for the throne of heaven. First of all, um, by now everybody should understand that what we call heaven is uh, a planet ship called Nibiru that came into our orbit a couple million years ago. And this planet ship is um, was heavily relying on the gold. And that's why they say this, the streets of heaven was paved with gold. And they talk about the pearly gates and things of this nature. All of this is descriptions of the internal um, city-states within the planet ship Nibiru. Um, there was often state dinners where the king of heaven, who in um, Sumerian tablets they call him Anu, in Egypt, they just called him An, A-N. And um, in Hebrew, they called him Eliun, Eliun, El. He hold the highest seat as king of the gods. And the galactic seat um, was number 50, was held by uh, Inanna, or the one we call Isis in Egypt. And that was the queen seat of heaven and earth. And because Earth was a feminine planet, um, there was no qualified males carrying the correct DNA, meaning the influence of mitochondrial, where they would have the right to rule. But over 
under the 50th seat, you have your 24 elders and the um, one on the 50th seat is the 25th elder in relation to them because that's where they get their instructions. So at the state dinner, what they call the Last Supper, um, well, that's not the same one. At the overthrow or the onset of the war in heaven was a gender war. <clears throat> because while earth was being um, mined for mineral resources, um, the geneticists that they call Enki is part of your trinity. Um, Enki, Inanna, and I'll get to the next one in a minute. Um, Enki was tasked with um, having females, um, surrogates, carry what we would call today test tube babies or clones. Most of them were clones, and most of them were not taller than like five foot. They were real little, but they worked the mines. They worked the mines in South Africa. They worked the mines in the Middle East. And from this um, discussion at the dinner table, um, the male gods said that they were superior to the female gods because one of them wanted the 50th council seat because it was coming up for renewal. And all of those who sat on these council seats were subject to change. And um, because Enki was the geneticist responsible for developing the genome, um, he used some material from beings that was already here. And you know him as um, Neanderthals, and they, which they made the Cro-Magnon. And then you had other species of Australopithecines that they use in the genetic soup. They also use a group of people that was not mammal. They were more reptile and they was called Saurians. And they interact. They almost looked at humans. And if you look up a disorder called ichthyosis, you'll see exactly what they looked at like um, when they had the big scales all over them. Anyway, <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Anyway, so um, because Inky was so proficient in these test tube clones in this genetic mixture, uh, admixture of reptile mammalian DNA, um, in order to um, produce an effective worker, and the reason why they mixed the two is they had two different um, mentalities. That's why you have three layers of brain. They got a reptile brain, you have the old mammal brain, and the new mammal brain. Every um, geneticist or doctor, phys brain neurologist, all of the doctors know you got, even people that just know anatomy know you have your reptilian, old mammalian, and your new mammalian brain. <clears throat> the new mammalian making up the entirety of your cerebral cortex. <clears throat> anyway, so... The argument break out that the one known as Enlil, who was um, um, assigned as the ruler of the Earth Command, a military contingent, he wasn't the ruler of the nature of the um, development of the planet. He was the ruler of the military aspect of securing the resources required but he wanted 